And as I was lying on that floor, I started hearing voices in my head that were saying that if I fell asleep, I was going to die and I was panicking. And I remember I felt a sharp pain in my chest. It was like someone shoved a knife in there and it was hurting and my chest started beating and it was, I was in pain. I was just lying down on the floor. I just remember looking at the ceiling. My head was spinning. I didn't know where I was. I was so high. I was, I was so lost and out of it that I was just completely scared and I thought I was going to die that night. And I just remember, I just called out to God. I said, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live that life anymore. Please change me, you know, help me get out of this situation. Thank you so much for having us here uh, to film your testimony. Um, why don't you just start with who you are, where you're from, what you do? Yeah, Sean, sure. thanks so much. Yeah, my name is Jeremy. I'm 29 years old. I'm born and raised in Sydney. Um, I have, uh, I'm obviously Australian, but I have Italian Cyprian background. Uh, so I've got that Mediterranean mix. Um, I have a beautiful wife, her name is Michelle, and I have a beautiful daughter named Alora. Um, we've been married for almost five years now. I'm a brand designer by, um, by day. So I've been freelancing and designing for about 10 years now. I work with um, big brands. I create content on YouTube. Um, I love making logos and, and making brands come to life. I'm a very visual person. Um, and yeah, I just love teaching others. I love helping people through my online course as well on Skillshare. Um, I've taught you know over 70,000 people on Skillshare. And I'm also a content creator as well. I have a big following on YouTube and Instagram. You can follow me at the Jeremy Mura or just search Jeremy Mura Design and you can find me on there. I've got loads of tutorials and I just love teaching and helping graphic designers run their freelance business full time and make a living on their creativity. So we'd love to know a bit more just about your early life. What was it like growing up for you? Um, and did you have any spiritual experiences as, as a kid? Was there any Jesus in your life? Yeah, so growing up, I was brought up a Christian um, from my mom. But just before that, my parents divorced at an early age when I was around seven years old. And that caused a lot of strife and stress on me. My mom was working three jobs just to pay the bills because my dad did leave. Obviously, I still... Um, see my dad to this day, he lives in, in Sydney, um, but it was just me, my brother and my mom. And so I had to help my mom um, go through that, that tough time. Yeah, I remember going to, growing up in a Pentecostal church, my mom um, uh, took us there. We used to go to Sunday school and do all that stuff. And yeah, we were just going with the flow. You know, I grew up seeing, you know, people getting healed and I was surrounded by, um, you know, the supernatural, I'd say, um, when I was young, but I did have to go through that trauma from my parents' divorce. Um, and I had to live with that and I had to deal with that as I grew um, older into high school. What, what was your relationship with God like? Like you're seeing these mm. miracles, you're seeing all this happen, but did you mm. have a personal relationship with God at the time? Or? I, I definitely had a, I had like a passion for God because I loved going to youth. I remember going to youth and going to church and learning about the Bible. I was, I was actually interested in it. It wasn't like sometimes when I got older, my, it felt like my mom was forcing me to go to youth and you know, all that stuff. but. I remember when I was 14 specifically, we went to this place called Vision Valley, and it's just up here near Golson actually. And um, you know, we did all activities like canoeing and stuff like that, but I actually decided to get baptized at the age of like 14. Um, and so I went in the pool, it was so cold, there was leaves, but I just remember that I made a conscious decision to follow Jesus because I could see it in the Bible, um, you know, and all the stuff I learned at Sunday school, and I just saw my mum's life completely changed because she was a Christian and praying and stuff like that. So for me, yeah, I did have a um, pretty good relationship with God and I was living for Him and, you know, I wasn't doing anything um, negative or bad at that time. So I clearly remember a specific time um, when my, it was sad, my dad, my, I remember I came home from my uncle, my uncle dropped, dropped me off back at home from like daycare or whatever it is. And I remember seeing um, a mattress on the floor and my dad's clothes chucked on the floor and everything was just on the lawn. And I was like, what's going on? I was so confused as a kid. And I realized that my mom was kicking my dad out. And, you know, I didn't know the full story was what going on. But, you know, what I realized is that they, you know, they were incompatible. They didn't, they had separate beliefs really. And so my dad's side was, they grew up as Roman Catholics. And some of his side of the family were actually um, atheists or agnostics. So they didn't actually believe in God. They just would go to church on Easter and would go to, you know, mass and stuff. And I remember in public school, I used to go to mass like, and we'd walk like this, you know, and it was just very religious and we'd listen to this priest and I would fall asleep and then would have to kneel down on the pews and like, like, and then my grandma would take, I remember my grandma would take us sometimes on the weekends and start lighting the little candles um, to pray for our family and stuff. And, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, but to me, it was just, 
I didn't like going there. It was very like weird and creepy going to this like cathedral church. They had nice windows and architecture. I really liked that, but everything else was really religious. And then my mum's side, yes, she was Christian, but before that, like half of the, that's her side of the family was actually Muslim. So there was always a constant battle between, you know, my mum, one of my aunties and all the other aunties, um, because my mum's actually a child of five. And so there was a constant battle between, you know, arguing about Jesus and Muhammad and Islam. And I just remember whenever we had family lunches, we would meet up at my grandma's farm to have like a nice banquet and, and eat, you know, um, as us wogs do, we have a feast and there would always be tension in the air. And I, and I just felt like, you know, it felt weird in my stomach and I just, I don't like tension. I, I prefer to have peace in the environment. And so I just remember the specific times when, when I was young growing up. There were some pivotal moments that when I was in high school, I actually used to be a people pleaser. And I realized later on that I was actually from the trauma from my parents divorcing and just trying to make them happy and please them. And so at high school, I was just the class clown. I would muck around, do silly things, you know, climb on tables, throw things and, you know, do all, do all that stuff. And um, yeah, I just remember that I was just trying to please everyone and I got manipulated by people around me. And I thought they were my friends, but I realized that they were just using me for laughs and just to, you know, but deep down I was actually, it, it affected me a little bit, you know, I got, I got a bit of sadness and depression and, and anger from that. But the, I think the the biggest thing that happened to me um, was just after high school, I never really dated anyone. So I got, one of my friends introduced me to this girl. She was uh, about one year younger than me. And I remember when I met her, I got this butterfly feeling in my stomach and I just felt like I was in love with this girl. And we ended up dating and I just felt like there was a spark there. And I started thinking I was gonna marry this girl. And we've only been dating like six, seven months. And so I, because it was my first time dating someone for a long, even though it wasn't that long, it was like a you know fair amount of time, um, I thought I was like, this was it. And so from that point, what happened was I actually, I remember she went off to schoolies, she lied, she cheated on me, um, did all these things and talked behind my back. Um, and basically that caused me to spiral down into darkness. And from there, I, I remember I went to my friend's house and I was just had so much anger. I was full of hate. I was just angry at her and just women in general and just caused me to just take risks. And I was the type of person that I used to confess I will never do drugs, I will never smoke, I will never have sex before marriage, blah, blah, all the rest of the list. And so I remember going to my friend's house, he had a joint and he's like, here bro, man, you look stressed, you should have a hit. I'm like, nah, nah, I didn't do that. And he's like, come on bro, it's, it's good, it's good. And then next moment, you know, I'm zipping on that J and getting high. That was the pivotal point of when I started spiraling down and it just got worse and worse and worse. And it started with weed, then it started with, with cocaine. I used to pop MDMA pills. I would go to the King's Cross, you know, I would go to all the clubs, World Bar, Soho Friday nights, the club on Saturdays, Ivy Bar. I would pop MDMA, would dance to house music and deep house and get off my head. I went to Thailand and I did magic mushrooms. Um, you know, I, I started sleeping around. I became a womanizer every time I would go in the club. My goal was just to hook up with as many girls as I, as I would. And sometimes I would hook up with three to four girls in one, one night. And, you know, I was, in, I was an angry person. I got into alcohol as well. And so every, almost every weekend would go to either house parties. And I actually got into DJing at that time as well. So I was around 18 years old, but I started DJing a bit earlier than that. Because I was a DJ as well, I got invited to do all these house parties. So I was going to house parties, we would get drunk, you know, smash down bottles of alcohol or whiskey, mix it and smoke weed and just get high and just do stupid stuff. We went to the city one time and my, um, we would pre-drink, would fill up water bottles, drink, jump on the train, then go to the city, go to the cross. And then, you know, just before we went uh, into one of, the, one of the clubs, I remember we pop pills, then go on the clubs. And then um, I remember specifically one time we got into this big brawl because there was this girl my mate was dancing with and she had a boyfriend or something. And then next thing you know, they're throwing punches and we just get into this massive brawl and my friend like broke his nose and it was just toxic. And this was happening almost every weekend. When I was about 20, 21 years old, this, all this has been going on for around two years, um, since I was like 18, 19. 
and it was my mate's 21st birthday. And so he booked a hotel in Bondi Junction near the city. We planned out to go clubbing. He invited girls to the hotel and that night was a wild night. I remember that same day I woke up at 6 a.m. because I had to go work. I used to work at Woolworths as a checkout chick. So, you know, I would work. I worked from six to like four in the afternoon. I remember I got my cousin to drive me to the city because I was on a crash there that, that, that night. And basically I was on everything. I did weed, I snorted Coke, I snorted red pills, MDMA. I was drinking alcohol. I was basically just doing everything. And I just remember we went clubbing, we came back to the, um, to the hotel. I was pulling bongs just all day, all night as we were there. And I just remember there came a point where I was around two to 3 a.m. in the morning and half the people passed out on the floor. And as I was lying on that floor, I started hearing voices in my head that were saying that if I fell asleep, I was gonna die and I was panicking. And I remember I felt a sharp pain in my chest. It was like someone shoved a knife in there and it was hurting and my chest started beating and it was, I was in pain. And I was just lying down on the floor. I just remember looking at the ceiling, my head was spinning. I didn't know where I was, I was so high, I was, I was so lost and out of it that I was just completely scared and I thought I was gonna die that night. And I just remember, I just called out to God. I said, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. I don't wanna do this anymore. I don't wanna live that life anymore. Please change me, you know, help me get out of this situation. And I just remember, <coughs> I remember lying, <laughs> lying there and I just remember, I just fell asleep, I passed out. And then I just remember I woke up, it was like 7 a.m. and I was, I was fine, my chest wasn't hurting as much. But I just, I knew something happened in that moment when I called out to God. Literally two weeks later, a friend called me up. My friend Daniel, who I met at university. We only had one class together and when we started at UTS and he was the only you know, Christian guy I knew. And I just remember he called me out of the blue because we used to talk at university. He calls me out of the blue and he's like, hey man, how you doing? Um, do you want to come to church, man? Like, yeah, like I think that will be cool and stuff. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, sure. And I consider myself as an honest person and I wanted to keep my word to him. So I'm like, okay, sure, I'll come, I'll come on Sunday. He told me that it was down at Blacktown, this church called Christ Embassy. I'm like, all right, bro, I'll, I'll come check it out. That same week, I remember it was Saturday night. I remember I was at my friend's house smoking weed while we high and watching cartoons till like three in the morning. But I still remembered, oh, I had to go to church that morning. So I put alarm on. I remember I just crashed at my friend's house and uh, I remember waking up and I literally drove all the way from Cherry Brook, which is in the hills, all the way down to Blacktown, which is like a 35 minute drive. And I was still a little bit high from smoking the night before. And, and basically I drove there. And when I went into that church, it was just a welcoming environment. Like the people were so friendly. And I just remember that when the worship started and they started praising God, I just remember lifting my hands and I just felt the peace of God hit me like a truck. It was like, I just got just hit so hard. I started crying. I just felt the peace of God just fill me. I felt the love of God. I just felt like God was saying, I love you. No matter what I, no matter what I did, you know, in the past, no matter the drugs or the, you know, the sleeping around and the drinking and all that and the clubbing. I just, that wasn't in my mind anymore. I just felt God's love and his peace just fill me up. And I felt like all this baggage and weight just lifted off me in that moment as I was just lifting my hands, worshiping God and just crying out. And I just remember that that was the catalyst. That was the moment that, that basically set me on a journey that just catapulted me up to a new level, a new dimension. And I just remember listening to the pastor, the preacher that was there, and the words were just piercing my heart with so much truth and so much light. And it was like, I've never heard this before. You know, he was speaking about faith and identity and how God values us and, and wants us to be successful. And it just completely just rattled me and changed my life. And ever since that moment that I went, I chose to go to that church, my life completely changed. And it was a process of, you know, I had to go through deliverance and stuff like that, but that was the key moment. So my journey was a bit of a slow process. I think it took me around one to two years to fully come off, um, you know, cutting out those temptations of like drugs um, because I did have a lot of friends. And so I had to actually, you know, cut a lot of my friends out of my life because you, you are a product of your environment. You, you know, as a man thinks, so is he. So you become 
what you meditate on, what you, you know, the friends you hang with. And so I remember, I remember I caught up one of my friends from high school that I used to party with. And I was like, hey dude, look, I'm not hanging out with you guys anymore unless you want to get coffee and just chat. But I'm actually, I don't want to do drugs anymore. I don't want to party. So don't call me anymore. And I hung up and literally I had to do that process slowly over, you know, months to get rid of all my past friends, my past life, you know, I had connections, connections with drug dealers. I, would have, I deleted their numbers off my phone, you know, and I had to just get rid of all those bad connections. And I just remember, because my mom was a Christian, she had a lot of these deliverance books and um, she helped me go through a process of um, doing uh, renunciations, cutting soul ties with any woman I slept with, uh, breaking any um, ties from the past, um, you know, getting rid of bitterness, angerness. And I would remember she would help me go through these prayers, you know, and to, I had to deal with all that stuff within my heart. And, you know, it was a bit of a process, but I just remember, you know, I would pray, pray, and just break those things off my life, um, you know, break any images that I used to, that I've seen, because I saw some, you know, messed up things. And so I had to cleanse my eyes and just go through that, that prayer process and it really just set me free. I felt, I felt freedom. I felt I had clarity. And so that was the beginning of the journey of that. But one of the key things that helped me change was the renewing of my mind. When I went to Christ Embassy, those, they had a, it's a global church and the man of God, um, his name was Pastor Chris Oyakalome from Nigeria. He was the senior pastor and the president. And I just remember I would just feast on his YouTube videos for hours every day whether it was a podcast or a YouTube video, I would just listen to so much of that word and slowly over time, filling myself with that knowledge and understanding of the Bible and having um, that relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit completely radically changed me. And I just remember that after renewing my mind, I just had so much clarity, I had purpose and you know, God started radically shifting and my life started going upward. I just remember I started getting friends from high school call me up. I remember there was this one guy, he called me up, we met up for coffee and he's like, dude, what happened to you? You've changed. You're like, you're so much wiser. You're so different now. Like what's going on? And I just say it like I gave my life to Jesus. Like I'm at church now. I started serving um, as a youth leader, I would run youth on Friday nights, I would host like barbecues and events down at Blacktown at the park just to get youth and would pray for people. Um, I remember would have, um, I started serving in church. I was reading like the daily devotional. I started preaching as well. I got opportunities to do that. I remember like we would have like pastors come from overseas and I would be driving them like <laughs> um, to and from the conferences. And I was just like, I was honored. And it was just, it was just so awesome. God was just blessing me. I would get prophetic words and from like friends that were in the church. And my life would just go up and forward. I had so much peace. I had so much clarity. I remember I failed my first two years of uni, which were during that phase when I was doing drugs and partying. And then God showed me this course to do and I got my um, Bachelor of Graphic Design in two years. Um, and I got that in 2015, which was amazing. And then I remember as I was serving in that church, just things were just moving. I was being, becoming successful in my studies, in my business as I was started to freelance. I remember my leader at the time, I, went to, I dropped her home one time and I remember praying in the car and she, we started praying and I remember she saw a vision of my future, um, you know, and she started speaking by the Holy Spirit. She saw me preaching and just healing people and delivering people. And there was just so much light around me. She just saw angels and she said I had a big calling on my life and that God has chosen me to be, you know, a, a minister of, of God and to, to, that I have great things. And that really, I remember I was just sitting in the car and I was just like, wow, like God chose me, you know, a person that I didn't think I had any, anything to give, but you know, he just chose me because I was hungry for God. I just focused on him. I wasn't focused, you know, all those things, all those addictions broke off my life. You know, I didn't have any hunger for sleeping around or, or lust or anything anymore. You know, I just had a, a love for God. I was just so focused on him. And that was a pivotal moment for me to push harder in God. And then I remember in 2017, I went to Bible college. I did a year of pastoral leadership. I got to serve at some of the, the biggest conferences um, from one of the big Pentecostal churches in Australia, um, which was awesome. So I got to learn. And I remember specifically in 2017, I went on a mission trip to the Philippines with evangelist Tim Hall. And he's just an amazing man of God. And I just remember I went to these two islands. One was called Takloban and the other one was called Kalbayog. And we had a lot of team members. Some came from America, some came from Australia. And I just remember going on that mission trip, would preach in the streets, would see healings. 
and we would have this 3,000 people came to um, the Miracle Crusade and I just remember, you know, I was part of the prayer team and I got to pray for people and I remember Tim Hall, after he prayed, we would go and start laying hands on people, praying that the Holy Spirit would touch them, praying for healing, you know, um, casting out any demonic spirit, you know, speaking um, life. We would see people healed from, you know, pains in their body and their back. And I just remember um, one time I went up to this lady, she was actually deaf in one of her ears. And I just remember, um, you know, grabbing her and, and, and just went up to her ear and I said, I commanded that ear to open and she started hearing. And there was a translator there and I said, can she hear? Because I wanted to make sure that she could hear. And she's like, yes, yes, she can hear. And I did this to her ear and that ear was open and she could start hearing. So uh, it was just amazing to see God move. You know, we saw people get out of wheelchairs. We saw, um, pe you know, people set free of demons. And it was just a powerful and mighty move of God. After I finished Bible college, after I did that mission trip, I was just so on fire for God. But And I was just seeking the kingdom first. And the Bible says, if you seek the kingdom first, he'll add all these things will be added to you, you know, whether it's, you know, house or a job or whatever it is. And so God decided to add to me a wife. And the funny thing is that um, it was actually my friend Daniel that I mentioned. It was actually his sister. And she's the, the, the woman that I met at that church, Christ Embassy, when I used to, when I used to go there at, in Blacktown. And yeah, and so God revealed to me that it was actually her because we've been friends for many years. Um, we built that friendship and yeah, just God revealed that she was meant to be the one. I got so many confirmations. I had a vision one time. I saw her in a wedding gown and I just saw her moving like this. I, um, you know, got prophetic signs as well from um, other people um, in my life that I knew. And then I was going to Israel as well that in that time between 2017 and 2018. And I remember, and I said, God, if she's truly the one for me, tell her to bake me a lemon cheesecake because that's my favorite cake. And I just remember she was mentioning me like, oh, because it was my birthday before, because I was going to leave and it was going to be my birthday. And she's like, hey, I want to bake. She, I remember she messaged me. She was like, hey, I want to bake you a cake. I'm like, okay, cool. And then she's like, oh, what flavor do you want? Or what, you know, what's your favorite? I'm like, oh, I'm not going to tell you. you. You ask God. And then... On that day, she showed up um, after church and she literally bought me a lemon cheesecake. And then I was like, oh wow. And I was, I was sold from that point. And then we ended up getting married um, within a year and a half. Um, we got engaged that same year uh, in December, then got married in June in 2018. And um, we've just have seen the blessings of God, the favor of God in our life. Like we've never lacked anything. You know, our, my wife has three businesses that she runs. My business started flourishing. You know, my business has, I've been so, I've been thankful to run a six figure business because of God. I've grown my following on social media to, you know, over 150,000 people on, you know, multiple platforms. Um, you know, I'm one of the, I'm a top teacher on Skillshare as well. I've taught over 70,000 students and God was just blessing me with so much wisdom and understanding. I remember I would read so much books, invest in myself, development, take courses and invest in, you know, certain people. And my, it was just like, I was accelerated so fast because I put God first and everything in my life just started to fit into place. It was like I, I became in sync because I submitted my will to the will of God. And so every part of my life, because I put God first, just came together. We started serving in church, um, and then even COVID hit and I was, and people were like struggling with jobs and stuff. But it's funny because my business actually doubled in revenue at, revenue at that time. And I was starting getting more jobs and more brand deals and stuff when I decided to quit my job um, at the end of 2019 because I was working part-time at an agency. And I decided to step, take a step of faith because I felt like I was working in a job that I wasn't growing. I hit a cap and I felt like Holy Spirit was telling me like, you got to take that leap. You got to take risks. And faith is taking risks. So I just remember I was bored. I'd watch YouTube because I had no work to do at, at work. I was just designing stuff and I'd finish. And then, I, and then I quit my job at the end of 2019, November. And then 2020, my Instagram and everything started blowing up, started creating content about design. And um, yeah, and then now everything's just been continuing to grow since then. And yeah, I have so much clarity and so much peace. I have purpose. I know that I'm called to serve the kingdom, serve, serve the church. And I'm excited for the future. So just as we come to the end of your testimony, um, is there any advice you can give someone who, who was like you? Maybe they gave their life as a kid to Jesus, but then they backslid and they ended up in, in this world that they don't, don't belong. Um, what advice would you give someone like that? Hmm. What I would say is that we only have one opportunity, one 
life. We need to make it count. You know, the Bible says tomorrow is not promised. You don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. God tells us to focus on the present moment, focus on today. And so, you know, you can go do drugs, sleep around, party, do all the stuff that the world tells you to do, but it'll leave you empty and broken and voidless in your heart. And the only person that can fulfill that void is Jesus Christ. And when you have God, in, like your life will be completely different because you actually have purpose. You have a reason for being. You have a reason for living because without Him, it's pointless. So cut out any negative influence in your life, any person that is not on that straight and narrow path, anyone that's not going to uplift you and add value to your life, and start hanging around with people that are godly, that are spiritual, um, that believe in God, that believe in the Bible. Because if you position yourself in the right place at the right time, then God can use the people around you to build you up, to speak into your life and to give you, you know, help you understand your identity and, and to speak into your, you know, destiny. And then you'll, once you know your destiny, you have a, you know, you'll know where you're going in life. You won't just be wandering around clueless. Like most people in their life, they live in a dead end job they, that they hate. You know, their marriages are falling apart and people are just, you know, greedy and, and lustful and there's no love. But with God, you know, you can have that love. So I would say put your faith in Jesus. You know, the, he has so much more for you and, you know, the power of God will just transform your life and you will be a success and you will have, you know, great victories in your life. I wish someone told me that God had a calling on my life, that I was called for great things because I think if someone was there mentoring me, you know, and speaking that I had a destiny, that I had a purpose and just revealing, you know, giving me that revelation that, you know, God's calling for great things. I feel like that would have set me um, on the right path from the beginning um, and helped me just, you know, have that purpose because without purpose, I was just like living life and just going through the motions, you know? And so if someone really just say, hey, no, like I believe you have a destiny, like I believe you're called to do this, um, and serve God and, and do this. And then I really would have been like, wow, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, I had that in that seed is within me and I would have just pursued it with everything. So thanks again so much for having us here, sharing your testimony. Uh, last thing is just to pray for anyone who's watching. So if you're watching, I just want to pray over you and I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just speak healing over every single person who's watching this. I speak life into your body, into the cells, into the DNA. I command life and healing to be imparted into your body right now. I command every demonic influence and every demonic spirit to be to go in the name of Jesus. I break every stronghold. I break every drug addiction. I command the spirit of lust to leave you in the name of Jesus. And I just speak um, you know, life and prosperity over you and whatever you're struggling, struggling with right now, I just ask that the Holy Spirit touches you. I pray that the fire of God, you know, touches your body, touches your mind. I speak clarity and I command all anxiety and, and all those doubts that you have to be gone and I just release faith into your heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that was awesome. Wow. Praise God.